All right, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of uh, audience participation here. So I'm going to need you to raise your hand. I'm going to ask a couple questions here. So who in the audience here today would say you are living the American dream? All right, that's most. Who in the, in the audience would, would define themselves as successful? Okay, most. Who would say that you're living a lot live of significance today? Good number, awesome. And then who considers themselves part of the 1%? Okay, awesome, thank you. Um, so what I'm gonna talk with you about here today is the new American dream. Not what you're thinking it is, the new American dream. And for those of you who don't know who I am, I'll just start off with a little bit of an overview and I'll tell you a quick bit about my story here. Um, but I'm the founder and CEO of a company called DLP Capital. Uh, today we have a hair under 500 full-time employees, um, a little under $3 billion of assets under management. We've grown the organization over these last 16 years by 60% or more every single year. One of the 5,000 fastest growing companies in America for nine straight years. I'm also the father of three uh, boys, including my adopted baby son, Jacob, there in the picture. Uh, I still got a lot of work to do to catch up to my good buddy, Josh, who I know is coming up here soon, who's got 10 kids. Um, but uh, uh, I've been married for 11 years to my wonderful wife, Carla, and uh, ha in many ways, I like to say, living the American dream. I'm 37 years old. I have a deep relationship with my creator, with the Lord. I have a great family, as I just showed, a loving wife, three kids. I have a lot of freedom. I have a beautiful home in St. Augustine, Florida, where I call home. Also have a house on the mountaintop, not here in Denver, in Asheville, North Carolina, the East Coast, uh, Colorado. Um, I have a private plane. I've created generational wealth, and maybe uh, coolest of all, I get to run in a really incredible organization where I get to do exactly what I want to do every day, right? So, in, in every way I, that I would define the American dream, I'm able to live that, that American dream right here today. But I didn't start off with that was gonna be so obvious. It didn't, my life didn't start off where it was you know, some guarantee or some expectation um, that I'd achieve you know, the kind of success that I've been blessed to have. I grew up to two 16-year-old parents in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We shopped at yard sales. We had very, very limited means, as you can imagine, with two 16-year-olds. My dad was a prison guard most of my childhood. My mom ran a home daycare. So I was the oldest of five and would have five or six other kids in my house at all times from sunup to sundown every day. I lived in at least 35 homes by the time I was 17 years old. Went to four schools in uh, the third grade alone. I don't have a single family member who's gone to college. Uh, prior to me, a single family member who had ever started a business. So all those things to say, you know, the odds weren't really high that I'd start and grow a large business and achieve, you know, significant uh, success. Um, but the odds didn't get, even, didn't get better as I got, got older. So when I was 17 years old, a junior in high school, I moved out of my parents' house. Um, and not many people, I assure you my parents, nor my guidance counselors or anybody at school, thought I was destined for success when as a junior in high school I moved out of my parents' house, didn't want to listen to anybody, thought I knew everything better, and was set out to, to, to go uh, figure things out on my own. That didn't increase you know, the, the chances that um, any greatness would come. To put it in perspective, uh, my sister uh, is an addict. Uh, big crisis, I know affects a lot of our families. My sister spent some of this past year in prison She's been in and out of uh, rehab for much of the past uh, decade. And I just say that to say again, it wasn't obvious that you know, success would come. But what did, I, what did I do right? Why was I able to have success? Well, first, one reason is I learned what I call the five keys to success, um, which are what, I'll, what are on the screen here, which is I've lived a life of intention, I've had clear purpose, I've set really big goals, I've approached life with grit and with a growth mindset. And that's been a part of you know, what's allowed me to have success. And I'm sure many of you feel similarly. From that effort, from those, uh, those behaviors, I've been able to achieve financial success, maybe even greater. I, I live fully, which I'll talk more about what that means in a moment. 
And for many, when they achieve you know, a certain level of success in life, it, it becomes the time where you think, maybe now I start relaxing, right? I can start coasting, I can start enjoying, I don't have to work so hard anymore um, because I've now made it. And you know, maybe you sell, the, sell your company or you, you start you know, relaxing or, or retiring even. And many would say there's nothing wrong with that, right? To start relaxing, to, to, to soak in and, and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Um, but I believe there is something wrong with that. I didn't achieve what I've achieved because I'm so great. The Lord has given me you know, many great blessings, like so many of us in this room here. Um, I live in the greatest country on earth. I live in the information age. Albeit my parents had very limited means, they grew, uh, I grew up in faith. I grew up in the church. I had parents who cared about me and loved me. Many great advantages that I simply leveraged um, into, into what I, I've been able to accomplish. And many of you I know have a similar journey, a similar story. Not everybody does that, right? Not everybody takes advantages of the opportunities they have, um, but, I, but I was able to do so. I believe, though, because we live in this great time, in this great country, and we're all in this room so blessed, the opportunity today is not for us to live the American dream. Just achieving some financial success um, is not enough, but living the new American dream, what I call the 100x American dream, going from success to significance. It's a big difference, success, success to significance. The new 100x American dream is not about achieving personal financial success or wealth. It's about something much bigger. Today's American dream is about making an impact, a 100x impact. And that's the challenge I have for everybody in the room here today, is I challenge you to make an impact, to make a difference. I believe we're all called to make a 100x or even a 1,000x impact, which I'll discuss more here in a moment. This idea of making a 100x impact is not something uh, that I came up with. I actually learned this concept from an organization called the Halftime Institute. Anybody here familiar with Halftime? Wow, almost nobody. So Halftime is a phenomenal book called Halftime by a great gentleman named Bob Buford. And many of the greatest, most successful business leaders you, you think of or know have gone through this organization called the Halftime Institute. And within the Halftime Institute, there's a subgroup, kind of a more intense version of this group called the 100X group focused on everybody in the group, figuring out how they can leverage their resources, their passions, their platform to make a 100x impact. Now, as the, the title of the organization, Halftime Institute or Halftime Organization, typically people who go through this organization are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, right? They're people who've built incredible careers, and now they're thinking, hey, how do I now do good, right? I've made a lot of money, how do I do good now? They're trying to figure out what do they do with the second half of their life. That's how this organization came about. In the group I'm a part of, a small group of some really incredibly successful people, I'm the only person in the group uh, less than maybe 60, but certainly less than uh, late 50s. And I believe, and in, in see we're seeing this more and more in this organization as a whole, is that you don't have to wait until you're in your 50s or in 60s until you've already achieved success to now focus on making an impact or now focus on doing good. You can do it right now. You can do it by leveraging your platform. For many of us, we may never be in a greater position than we're in right now. The skills we have, the knowledge, the influence, the relationships you have right now that you can leverage to make an impact, to make a 100x impact. In order to make an impact, you've got to figure out where, you, where do you start? How do you go about doing so? For many, they start with philanthropy or ministry as a way they look to do good. Another option, though, I encourage many of you to consider is looking towards your business as a way you can make an impact. Let's talk about philanthropy. Philanthropy is something every one of us in this room, no matter how much wealth we have, no matter how much we're earning today, should all be doing, right? I believe strongly in tithing, uh, giving back, um, uh, is something everybody should be doing. I, like many people, once they achieve some uh, financial success, I went out and set up a foundation a number of years ago called the DLP Positive Returns Foundation. And we opened it up to our organization who wanted to be a part of it and directing the good we're going to do and have about 30, 40 of our team members who joined 
um, to be on various committees. We made a giving pledge in the organization that we give 1% of our time, everybody in the organization has the ability to give 1% of paid time to any ministry or service project or cause they want. And then we committed as an organization to give a quarter percent of our net revenue to the foundation and a quarter percent of all the capital we raised to the foundation. We determined that we, there were four different crises, four different areas of impact we, we could focus on and that we could leverage our platform and our relationships and our knowledge and our abilities to be able to make an impact on. First being the affordability crisis of workforce housing. That's the biggest one we're focused on, the most directly one we're focused on. I know many of you are as well. The second area of impact we felt we could make a big difference on is the jobs crisis. The fact that so many jobs in America today will not be here in just a short period of time due to all the innovation and technology that's going on. That's really actually an exciting thing. It's not a scary thing. We've got to retool people into, into new jobs, which means you need businesses that are going to create new jobs. The third area of impact we decided to focus on was what we call the legacy crisis, which is the shirt sleeves, the shirt sleeves in three generations, the fact that most first generation wealth creators' wealth will be lost, if not by your kids, by your grandkids. And then the fourth area of crisis we decided to focus on is the happiness crisis. Anybody surprised to hear that we have the greatest levels of unhappiness in America history, history right now? Right? Highest levels of depression ever right now? So we decided to leverage our platform, DLP Capital, to do this. And so we've been doing, doing a lot of giving. It's really cool. This past year, that quarter percent of net revenue and quarter percent of capital is over a million dollars, right? This is real money, right? And it's only growing as the organization grows. But I had an aha a little while back. And as cool as it is that we're making this difference through our foundation and through 1% of our, everybody's time and, and a quarter percent of our revenue and capital, it hit me when we broke about 400 employees it hit me that I had people working over one million hours a year under my direction. I had a million hours a year that I could direct how I, how, how I wanted to, direct the direction of the organization. That, was a, um, that hit me and I, and I thought, why would I want people just to do 1% of their time for ministry or for good? Why wouldn't we want to make an impact with all million hours of our time? I said, why would I want to give away a quarter percent of our capital we raised when we have you know, billions of dollars of assets. Why give away one percent, quarter percent of our revenue when we have hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue? Let's make a difference, make an impact with all of our capital, all of our revenue, all of our time. So we went and mandated on ourselves that we were going to be an impact company. We went and mandated that all of our capital is going to be, all of our funds are going to be impact funds. We self-mandated that at least 85% of all of our capital will be invested in housing that will create uh, uh, affordable workforce housing uh, uh, for the local workforce now and throughout the life of our investment. Um, so we made sure that not only are we still doing giving and ministry uh, and running our foundation, but that all of our time is, is making a difference. All of our time is, is narrowly focused on doing good. It's really, really hard to grow a business, right? You guys all know that, right? It's really, really hard to make an impact and, and, and do good. It's even harder to do them both together but man, is it a lot more rewarding to do so. In addition, we, we've worked really hard to say, in, in addition to just giving certain money to our foundation, we wanted to make sure that we were very intentional on in how we best leverage our platform of our organization. So we thought about what are the things we do at DLP and how do we make sure off of the things we do that are making a positive impact, our giving is working right alongside of it. So as an example, every rental community we acquire we provide Bibles to all of our residents. We do Bible studies at our communities. We provide a housing unit to a Christ evangelist on site, working with organizations like Apartment Life, as an example, if you're familiar. We provide an apartment on site to a local nonprofit. Could be a homeless shelter, um, kids aging out of, uh, out of foster programs, battered women, but we provide and our foundation pays for it uh, to be able to give back to that local community. For every new elite member we bring aboard, which are real estate operators like yourself, who we help scale their business, we help a nonprofit or a ministry or somebody who can't afford to pay for our services to scale their business, which, which will make more sense in a moment. For every loan we make through our lending business, we're now doing micro loans um, to those in need. So leveraging everything we do, we're good at where we have expertise and knowledge and relationships 
to do good through our foundation alongside the impact we're making in our organization. So you think, well, how, how do I, where, where, based on where you are in your business and your journey, how do you make an impact? It starts with determining what your mission is. What are you passionate about? And then what's your platform? Maybe that's your business. Maybe it's not. But what's the platform that you can make the biggest difference from? We have a great tool that will help you figure out your mission, figure out your platform, figure out what you want to accomplish in this life, how you want to make an impact. We call it the personal compass. It's a tool that's going to help you make an impact. It's going to help you live fully. And to me, living fully is when you're succeeding and, and living a life of significance and success across all eight F's of life, as we call them, faith, family, friends, freedom, fun, fulfillment, fitness, and finance. That's real success when you're uh, achieving uh, success and achieving your goals in all of those areas of your life. And this tool, this personal compass is at the booth uh, in the back. Also, you can download it on this link as well. You can also, with that download, download my personal personal compass as a reference point um, if you'd like as well. In this journey of using this personal compass myself and figuring out how to make the biggest impact, I've set my own personal mission as to serve the Lord, leveraging DLP as my platform, utilizing my skills as CEO and leader to make a positive impact on the major crisis in the world that I just referenced. We've set up our business model across the organization uh, to be able to allow us to scale the company um, and make an impact across these four crises. This led to me writing a book called Building an Elite Organization, which is a book on how to scale a high growth high profit business, which we wrote to be able to help many companies create jobs and make a positive impact on the happiness crisis. Or they're creating organizations that connect their employees, their people to a purpose, to a meaning uh, greater than themselves. Writing this book, which I'm going to be uh, signing uh, in the back in the Q&A section then, writing this book then led us down a path of setting up something we call an elite membership, which is where we take a very deep dive of helping real estate operators who primarily are investing in housing to go and scale a great business, to be able to build a business that makes an impact. And we provide them with tools and resources and training and capital and guidance on how they can make the biggest impact, how they can build a great organization. So to wrap up here, um, I'm going to tell a, uh, a story here of one of our elite members, one of the members of this group I mentioned. Um, named Rocco. Rocco has a pretty amazing story. So he was born in Bulgaria as a family of seven. His mom was very sick his entire childhood, couldn't work. His father had to take care of the family, very limited means, very limited opportunities. Um, and he decided, as, as many uh, people who come to this country do, that the opportunities were greater in America. He wanted to live the American dream. So in 2006, when he was 21 years old, he came to America. He came to America illegally. He didn't want to hide, so he went and turned himself in. He spent 42 days in jail, hired an immigration attorney. It took him 15 years, it just happened a few months ago, to get his green card. So when he was here, he was an illegal uh, immigrant waiting on his, his green card. Not a lot of opportunities. 21 years old, so he took a job at a, at a uh, warehouse, oddly enough, making American flags as a, 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 for $5 an hour. He worked 106 hours a week to try to make ends meet. He had one young child at the time, was married, working really, really hard to just pay the bills and, and get a little money set aside. After a while of doing that, decided he needed to build some real skills. And he decided, he met a foreman who ran a um, a uh, framing company um, and decided he was going to learn construction. Went to that gentleman, asked him for a job, and he told him he had no relevant skills um, and no. And Rocco said, well, I'll work for free. So he worked for free uh, for this gentleman for a while until he proved himself, got, started getting paid, worked up through that organization, learned all the skills of construction. Then he decided he was going to get into home flipping in 2005. Bought his first home flip for $35,000 did all his own renovations, um, about 120000 he invested, sold it for $285,000, had his first little bit of money. Um, that's around the time I met him, and I said 2005, 2015. Um, that's the time I met him, and we started funding him on, on buying houses, renovating them, and flipping them, 
then building a rental portfolio. And then a couple years ago, after a few years of building a business, renovating homes, build a construction company, employing a lot of people, he came to me and said, Don, I want to buy this warehouse and I'm going to turn it into apartments. Like, that's a lot harder, Rocco, to buy a warehouse and do, go through commercial construction. It's a big difference in renovating houses. He says, you know, I'm confident I can do it. So we backed him, provided him the debt and equity to do this. Um, and, uh, and the pictures on the, on the screen there are this property that he converted into 18 apartments and a beautiful job, uh, a ribbon cutting there with the mayor. This is in a town called Bath, Pennsylvania, right near where I grew up and where Rocco ended up landing when he came to the U.S. And really cool story, and you see that American flag painted on the building. This was the place he worked on as his first job. Uh, he was able to buy it when it closed down and turn it into apartments, which is pr pretty cool. So he's been a member, part of our journey with us on figuring out how to make the biggest impact, from building a great company, uh, making a difference in lives, of lot, creating a lot of workforce housing. He's created over 1,000 uh, affordable workforce units over the last uh, uh, five or six years. And, but he's driven to do more. He wants to, he's now living the American dream in every sense of the word, but wants to help other people do the same. And at one of our recent events uh, we were doing, which I'm actually going to talk about in a moment, I was chatting with one of my employees, and, and Rocco was there, and a uh, uh, conversation of one of my employees, Jen, who uh, you see picture there, came up in this conversation. And Jen, somebody who we met, um, helping, she was helping her aunt sell a home, met one of my real estate agents, needed a job, had no t relevant skills, but we gave her a job in accounting. She worked really, really hard, uh, became team player of the year for our whole company in 2020. And one of the coolest things I get to do at DLP, and I highly recommend you guys stealing this idea from us, is we do this thing called Dream On, kind of like Make a Wish, where we grant dreams for our employees. And a couple years ago, Jen really wanted to buy her first home, wanted to be a homeowner, wanted to get out of a bad relationship she was in. So I granted her the dream of becoming a homeowner, and we provided her the financials uh, to do so. We helped her buy her first home. Grant thought it was a great success. She was so happy. That brings me back to this, this conversation I was having with Rocco at one of my events. Uh, my employee says to me, you know, he was talking with Jen, and she's living in this home that we helped her buy, but it's in terrible condition. It's, it's, in, it's basically, you know, unlivable, but she's going to have to try to sweat equity, improve it over many years. So Rocco immediately said, I want to help. So he donated all the labor to renovate her home. So we did a, what worked out to be over a $100,000 renovation on her home at no cost, and you see the pictures there today. She bought this home for $70,000. It's now worth over $300,000. He did all the work for free because he wanted to make a difference um, out of the goodness of his heart. And that's, that's what we're talking about here, making difference, paying it forward. Um, and uh, Jen's now you know, looking to do the same and doing some pretty awesome things. So living a, a comfortable life is not living fully. That's not the new American dream. If you want to learn more and figure out how you can make the biggest impact, how you can uh, accomplish the most in, in your career, in your business, in, in your philanthropy. Love for you to join us at one of our upcoming events. We'll be, we can talk more about these uh, in the back in the Q&A afterwards as well. We've got a big one in, in a couple weeks in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, um, March 16th to the 20th. We'd love for you to join us at one of our upcoming events. The link to all of our events is right there. Um, so everybody in this room, some of you raised your hand, a m minority for sure. Um, we are the 1%, those of us in the room here. Every one of us are 1% wealthiest, most successful, luckiest, for fortunate people in the world. Um, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you were able to make it to this room, you are in the 1% around the world. Um, we are the most blessed, most educated. So if we're not willing to make a difference, if we're not willing to step up, who will, right? If not you, then who? If not now, then when to make an impact? And to wrap up my talk here, I'm going to play a video here in a, in a quick moment. And to tee up this, this video, um, anybody ever, ever thought to themselves, or maybe had this conversation with your wife or, or somebody else that, man, I don't understand how God could allow you know, people to have cancer or you know, children to die or people to be hungry or be homeless, right? Anybody ever thought that, like, why does God allow these things to happen, right? And that's what... Uh, the question that Matthew West, a great uh, Christian singer, was asking God when God gave him the answer in this video here we're going to play here, uh, in just a moment.
So thank you, everybody. I challenge you guys to do something. Come join us uh, in the back in the Q&A. Love to chat with you. I'll be handing out books, doing signings. I'll talk to you about our upcoming events and how you can do something, how you can make an impact. Thank you. <laughs>